Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. In today's video, I wanna update you on which coins I'm buying. We're gonna start by doing a market check-in, then we're gonna get into some recent pressing news you need to know about if you're in the cryptocurrency space. So smash that like button if you appreciate the daily content. And let's start here. Bitcoin, $23,000 grinding higher and higher. My personal opinion, I think Bitcoin can at least get back up to $30,000. That's at minimum, this being a relief rally. But at this moment in time, Bitcoin is up from 20,000, which has been up from 17,000 right now at $23,000. How about Ethereum? Well, right now Ethereum is $1,600 and taking a look at ETH's price history, Ethereum up as well, strong rebound from ETH following a successful retest ETH is slowly approaching its next immediate resistance, which is this orange box right here. ETH would need to reclaim the bottom of that box as support if it is to move higher. For Ethereum to get above $2,000 again, it needs to really reclaim about $1,800. Then after that, I could see Ethereum getting to between 2,000 and 3,000. The point is Ethereum, like Bitcoin, seems to have entered into a trend change, at least for the short term, if not midterm, hopefully long term. But with Bitcoin and Ethereum now going in the up right direction, this gives strength to the whole market. So again, I ask you, what are you buying? I'll clue you into some things I've been buying near the end of this video. Let's get to some recent news. Major win for Polygon. Do we have any Matic holders out there? Well, Mercedes-Benz is tapping in to Polygon to develop a platform for data exchange. Mercedes-Benz Group taps Ethereum L2 scaling solution Polygon to build data sharing platform. Transactions will be carried out on Polygon or Ethereum RinkB test network. So this is starting in a singular part of the world, Southeast Asia, presumably if successful, this could be rolled out and scaled out to many locations. Anyways, Southeast Asia Mercedes-Benz Group introduced a blockchain-based data sharing network called Eccentric that is specifically designed for corporate users. The new project will let businesses purchase and sell data in a decentralized permissionless setting. Polygon, of course, is an Ethereum L2 scaling solution. It will help execute transactions. The blockchain network Polygon will also be utilized to exchange data from a variety of businesses, including insurance information, scientific studies, and clinical trial data through a Mercedes-Benz affiliate product. Although users have the option of using a stable coin rather than a cryptocurrency to pay for data, transactions will be carried out on the public blockchains Polygon or Ethereum Ring B test network. However, Polygon gas costs must be used using Matic, the native token of Polygon. So huge win for Polygon. This is what we like to see, presuming that cryptocurrency is the future. This is what we like to see, presuming cryptocurrency is the future. Miami, the city, is a real pioneer. Miami, the city, collabs with Time, collabs with MasterCard, collabs with Salesforce to sell 5K NFTs, 5,000 NFTs. Miami City's four-way partnership to mint NFTs on Ethereum will see money flow to local artists and talent. The city of Miami has announced a Web3 initiative backed by Time, MasterCard, and Salesforce to engage the community and drive additional revenue to local businesses. Miami aims to create a collection of 5,000 NFTs designed by 56 local artists the number 56 represents the city's 56 square mile area. NFT holders will be able to access MasterCard's priceless Miami program, which organizes unique culinary experiences and private events around the city. Then cloud provider Salesforce will handle the minting and selling via their newly unveiled NFT cloud product launched in June and currently in closed pilot. The NFT cloud is designed to aid its corporate clients in creating, managing, and trading them. The initiative is anticipated. This is going to launch in December with tokens deployed to the Ethereum blockchain following its upcoming merge, which will shift the network away from the energy intensive proof of work and towards proof of stake implementation. Quote from the mayor of Miami, the city of Miami, 
has been on the vanguard of the Web3 revolution, and we will continue to employ these new technologies to support our existing businesses while attracting new ones, raise capital, and provide experiences for our citizens and those visiting this great city. Major win for Miami, even bigger win for NFTs and crypto in general. Cardano holders, information you need to know. Cardano delays its much anticipated Vassal hard fork by a few more weeks. They just need a few more weeks. Cardano's highly anticipated Vassal upgrade has been pushed back again to ensure all potential issues are fully worked out. The key takeaways, Cardano's technical manager, Kevin Hammond, has said that there could be a few more weeks before the network launches its Vassal upgrade. Vassal is Cardano's most complex upgrade to date aimed at improving the network's scalability. It was initially supposed to launch on June 29th, but has suffered from two delays to allow more testing. Ethereum does this kind of stuff all the time. In fact, Cardano does this kind of stuff all the time. In fact, crypto does this kind of stuff all the time. Am I worried as a Cardano holder? No, this is really no big deal in the context of what we have come to expect in crypto and the Vassal upgrade hard fork is a big deal, it is a big one. So let's get it right. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below, Cardano holders. Of course, the coin of the next few months is Ethereum. Everybody is anticipating September 19th, the merge date, and Ethereum is pumping into this. Ethereum pumps past 1,700, is the merge surge back on? I would say yes, and we're seeing plenty going on in the Ethereum ecosystem. For instance, MetaMask has just implemented an update. This MetaMask Ethereum wallet update may help thwart NFT scams. This is a update MetaMask did to help prevent NFT scams. I love this. Following a rash of social media NFT scams, MetaMask adds an extra step that could help users avoid wallet drainer attacks. Now, if you are into NFTs a little bit and you use MetaMask or something like it, you're very familiar in the NFT space, how you constantly have to click and sign things with your wallet. In brief, Ethereum Wallet MetaMask has been updated to make users better aware of what they are signing when a certain permission is requested. That function is widely used in social media scams that have seen users lose millions of dollars worth of NFTs and tokens. So what exactly is the update? Well, a security firm Wallet Guard noted on Twitter the update. MetaMask now makes it clearer that a smart contract is requesting broad permissions, including access to any funds held within the wallet, a function that can be used for so-called wallet drainer exploits. Screenshots posted to MetaMask's GitHub software development repository showed a new prompt. So there's a new prompt that uses a larger font than the rest of the interface. The example texts read, so what you're going to see in MetaMask, give permission to access all of your NFT question mark with an additional warning reading by granting permission, you are allowing the following account to access your funds. This is a step in the right direction. I like this and it's making the NFT space safer. As you can see, NFTs are not going away. They're here to stay. NFT projects in the space today, at least the good ones, continue to build, continue to update. Here's some news. Yuga Labs adds a 5% royalty fee on MeBits NFT sales. In the NFT space, 5% royalty fee is not a lot. Yuga Labs, the company behind Board Ape Yacht Club NFT collection, has introduced a new 5% royalty fee on all MeBit sales. The studio hinted that the fee will help fund a specialized team that was put together to help build out the MeBits community. Of course, Yuga acquired MeBits and CryptoPunks. Originally, they were just Board Ape Yacht Club, but they acquired Punks and MeBits in March, granting holders full commercial rights to their NFT. Final piece of news, Axie Infinity CEO seemingly moved 3 million in tokens before their $622 million hack. Was this nefarious? Was he kind of siphoning off this money for himself? Well, Sky Mavis CEO Trong Nijin transferred the 3 million worth of tokens just before the hack was disclosed, but he says today that claims of insider trading are baseless and false. And of course, you are aware if you subscribe to us that Axie Infinity is repaying users who lost money in this attack. So let me know your thoughts in the daily news. Appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Smash the like if you got value in today's video, and let's talk about coins I have been buying. 
It's interesting. I don't know if you do this. I, I love seeing the people who I follow. I love to know what they're buying or what they're selling or what they're doing. For instance, Martini Guy. I buy more Bitcoin every day. I buy more Ethereum every day. I buy more e-gold every day. I do this because I think all of these cryptos will rise over time significantly. I hold e-gold. I'm bullish on the project in general. Have I bought any recently? No, I haven't. Have I bought Bitcoin and Ethereum recently? Almost every day. Not almost every day, but on a regular basis, I think Bitcoin's going to be here in 10 years. I think Ethereum going to, into the merge is bullish, and I think Ethereum's looking pretty bullish for the next at least five years. I mean, uh, possibly 10, who knows? But of course, I'm buying Bitcoin, Ethereum every day. I bought some Binance uh, BNB token maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, maybe a month ago, I bought some Solana, Polkadot, Cardano, Avalanche, just a little basket of L1s. And that's really what I'm buying. It's mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum. But let me know. Let me know what you're doing below. You know, I'm more of a conservative I'm more of a conservative guy sometimes, particularly in bear markets. In crypto, I'm conservative. Outside of crypto, I'm not conservative. But I know some of you guys are going like way down here. So yeah, let me know what's good. My name is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. See you tomorrow.